So, we're going to do some spring cleaning in this video. Actually, this is the ultimate test of minimalism. Or not really minimalism, it's really the ultimate test of are you a messy person, okay? So, here's what I want you to do. I want you to run this command on your computer. And you're going to get a number. The smaller is better, okay? So, here is the command. LSA, pipe that into word count of lines. Just run that. And show me what number you got. You might as well post it in the comment section so you can all bully each other about what numbers you got. Smaller is better. Better. I'll say that below 25 or so, that's ideal. If you got 30, 40, you're sort of a messy person. If you got closer to 100, you're a really messy person. If you got more than 100, I don't know what's going on. You got, you got some improvement to do or something. I don't, I don't know what's going on in your head. Now, of course, LSA, that's listing out all the files in your home directory. Now, of course, if you just do LS, that's only your normal files. But really what we're looking at is the hidden files here. Now, of course... Part of the mess comes from you just keeping a bunch of files in your home directory. Some people do that. I usually have my downloads directly to my home directory, even though I have a download folder. Um, but when it comes down to it, LSA will list out all these config files, which usually on Linux are going to be most of the files in your home directory. Um, now, the reason this is... Now, people ask me... Actually, I should say the reason I'm doing this video is... Um, I will occasionally LSA and people will comment about how few files of, I have in my home directory. It looks very organized. You can see them all. A lot of people, if you run LSA, it'll take up the entire terminal screen. There are easy ways to minimize the files in your home directory without messing things up. Okay. Now, here's the story. Here's How is this relevant to anything? It used to be that every single program, um, for example... Uh, you know, bat, your bash RC, your uh, i3 configuration, your stuff like that. Every single configuration file used to go directly in your home direct directory. So that meant that if you had a hundred programs, you had a hundred dot files in your home directory. And that's just going to be total mess. Whenever you have to run some command, uh, even just look at the contents, you're just going to see all this junk. Okay. Now, what eventually happened is people started moving things into different folders. So, for example, .config, if I ls the con contents of .config, you'll see I have a whole lot more in here. Actually, let's, let's count it up. I have uh, 75 uh, directories and files in here. Um, and uh, actually, some of these I don't even use anymore. But if in the olden days, all of this junk would just be in your home directory, it was a big mess. Um, but gradually... There started, I guess, what people call the XDG directory specifications, which meant, okay, we're going to move all config files to .config. We're going to move all uh, cache files to .cache. And there's also some stuff in .local slash share as well. Um, and that is just a way to clean up the home directory. Now, if you go to the ArchWiki right now, there is, actually, let's get my face so you don't forget what I look like. Um, if you go to the Arch Wiki right now and go to XDG base directory, if you check that, uh, uh, that uh, article or whatever, it actually lists out over, the, over time a bunch of the programs. Actually, that, let me go back here to provide some examples. Let's say, for example, i3. Uh, it used to be the i3's config was uh, way back. I don't, I don't know, even know where it used to be. i3. Yeah, it used to be in your home directory in the .i3 folder. Okay, and I think actually, I think if you get like Manjaro i3 by default, they still have it in this folder. It's disgusting to me. You need to just move everything into config. Um, but uh, as time went on, this is actually a list here. So for example, the supported programs, these are programs that all have moved into .config or, the pro or moved their cache to .cache and stuff like that. So if you are using any of these programs, Although they might have some legacy option to have it in your home directory, you can easily just move your config file into, you know, config i3 slash config, and it will still work perfectly fine. So you can go ahead and start moving those files into that, uh, into those, into the config directory or whatever. Now, there are other programs. Now, in order to get rid of some other programs from your home directory, actually, let me show you. Uh, I have a, uh, where's my environment file? Okay, actually, by default, I should say, so my, this file in my home directory, zsh environment, uh, it, I actually just have it list or load a uh, series of environmental variables, and this is what they look like. Now, you'll notice I have this big category here called cleanup, and that is 
all the different, there are other programs that don't necessarily support the XDG uh, directory specifications. They don't automatically look in, th look in the config directory for uh, configuration files or for cache files, but you can move things by manually setting them with environmental variables. And that's what I've done here. For example, xauthority, uh, by default, it will, you will have a .xauthority file in your home directory, but you can easily move it by just setting this variable and restarting, right? Same thing with a lot of things. Uh, input RC, uh, wget less has this annoying history file. I actually just delete it. Um, a whole bunch of stuff, and there are more here. These are just the programs I happen to use, um, which recent, uh, you know, G, uh, GNU PG, stuff like that. Um, even Kodi, I found out. It's not on the Arch Wiki. There are some things that are actually, uh, let me scroll down to that. So let's see. Um, on The Arch Wiki has, it does a good job at listing out most of the things that can take, let's say, environmental variables. Um, I guess it might not have them in a separate section. Um, but it lists out some of the things, the environmental variables that you can uh, uh, change, but they don't list all of them. It's not perfectly updated. Uh, but you can move a whole bunch of these just by specifying. So, for example, my ZSHRC. By default, that's going to be in your home directory. I don't like it there. So I have it moved into uh, .config slash ZSH. It would be really nice if they just had... Uh, XDG compatibility and Z ZSH by default, but you can at least set this. Um, so anyway, that's a way to clean up your home directories. So here are some of the variables I use, and there are other uh, there are other programs that still haven't built that. You know the the uh, the ability to use environmental variables uh, into their programs, um, but there are other things you can do. For example, I think if I go to my aliases here, there are a couple programs. Let's say a book. A book is, you know, an address book, and by default, it has it looks in the home directory. You can't change that with an environmental variable, but you can give A book the C option, capital C option, to change the location of its config file. So that's what I do here. Uh, I move it and its data file to somewhere else. So whenever I run A book, it actually runs this larger command that looks in a different place for the configuration file. Okay. So anyway, that is how I clean up my home directory. I recommend you to check out the, this page on the Arch Wiki just to give you sort of ideas of where to go. Um, but uh, I, I definitely like cleaning. I, ha I like having my home directory very clean. I've always liked it like that. And it actually annoys me to no end the fact that there are still files in here that I haven't moved to some other location like the ZSH environment. I'd like to be able to set that environmental variable somewhere else in a user specific location so I don't even have to have this file. Uh, you can you can actually move some of these. You can move X init RC but not every program will properly read them correctly but uh, if by default if you know if it's listed in the arch wiki you can at least move them without any major problems so i recommend trying that anyway that's about it just the minor note just because people have asked i'll see you guys next time oh yeah you like i i've been i'm using my uh my built-in my built-in webcam and uh microphone for this video just because i don't know i wanted to record outside i actually got a new thinkpad x220 and its microphone is not that bad it's a lot better than the one i used to have um maybe i'll talk about why i got a new one in another video but all right that's it see you guys next time